Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're talking about the latest update to iOS 16.2 iOS 16.2 beta 3 it is here a week after the release of beta 2 that means that as predicted we're now on a one week schedule so every week we will see a new beta of course until the final release and this update is nothing short of amazing i'm really loving this new update and beta 3 makes it even better so in this video we're going to talk everything you need to know regarding this new update and of course what the latest beta will bring to your device before we get into ios 16.2 beta 3 i just want to ask you guys for a huge favor if you have been watching my videos but you're currently not subscribed to the channel please make sure you do so it will really help the channel a lot and now let's get into iOS 16.2 beta 3 now first of all we're talking about the size of the update now of course as new betas get released they will be smaller in size and this one will come to your device at around 500 to 600 megabytes that is of course always different on different devices and it will be different based on which software you have currently installed on your device but right here on the iphone 14 pro max it came at around 600 megabytes and the new build number for ios 16.2 beta 3 it is 20c 5049e this is the latest build number for the latest beta that apple has released for ios 16.2 and now let's get into the good stuff the new features and changes that this update will bring to your device and we're talking specifically about beta 3. first of all on shortcuts you won't find get battery level anymore now you will find get battery status and it will bring way more than previously i will have here way more things here describing what this does but even if you use this so you tap there you can see now it says get battery level but it won't do just that it won't just get the battery level but if you tap there now you can switch to other things like is charging is connected to a charger or ask each time or shortcut input so this won't just do the battery level it will also tell you if it's charging and if it is connected to the charger this is a great new update that apple has added to this action on shortcuts now with the release of ios 16.2 you probably know that apple has added a new feature that will let you turn off the hide ip address feature for any specific website and you can actually do that straight from the aa menu on safari but now with beta 3 unfortunately i don't have that feature here because you will need to have private relay enabled to have that feature now it has changed the wording now it says just show ip address and also they have added a new glyph icon for that action a new change has been made on the settings app as well so previously when you went to siri and search and went here to siri responses you will have prefer silent responses this has been added with ios 16.2 but now with beta 3 they have added this under accessibility as well so if you go to accessibility and you find here siri now you will have right here spoken responses so you will have this option under the accessibility settings as well so basically if you prefer siri not to speak you can just go ahead and choose prefer spoken responses and it will give you spoken responses every time unless you're connected to your car then it will give you spoken responses now apple is making a lot of changes to the features that they have added previously with ios 16.2 and one of them is under tv here if you go to tv and go to live activities you have now the option for more frequent updates but this what apple has done with this with beta 3 is that they have added actually more information so if you use more frequent updates maybe on a sports game you're watching a sports game so let's say the game suspended you will now get a notification so that's really really amazing apple is adding a lot of these features to the more frequent updates options on the live tv of course sports and things like that even though this feature is currently only available for the tv app it's not available for third-party apps but of course by the time this update gets out to the public it should be ready to go for third-party apps as well and we finally got the feature we have been waiting for since the release of ios 16 and the new iphones the always on display 
without a wallpaper in the background. You can see how cool this looks. You no longer have to have the wallpaper in the background. Of course, when you tap, you will see everything. When it goes to sleep, you just see the clock and the widgets that you have. Now, this is, of course, an option now with iOS 16.2. If you head on to your settings, you will have new options for the always on display. So head on to display and brightness. And right here under always on display, now you have the option to show the wallpapers and show or not notifications. So previously, of course, we had the wallpaper. It was just dimmed in the background. Now you can absolutely turn it off from here. You can even turn off notifications. So on the always on display, the only thing you will see is of course only the clock and the widgets that you have on your display. This is really amazing. Probably it should have been like this since the release of iOS 16 and the new devices. But fortunately, we finally got this feature and it actually looks really, really good. I really like the way they did this as it makes the lock screen look way, way better than having the dimmed wallpaper in the background. Now, another thing you will notice is that if you have a focus attached to one of your lock screens as it shows here when you turn off show notifications you can see it will also hide the focus mode that you have turned on and of course the clock and the widgets if you have them customized and you have a custom color on them they will show here the custom color and here we have some more features that have been added to iOS 16.2, but we didn't have a chance to talk about them. These have been added on iOS 16.2 beta 2. First of all, you will get now more markup tools. So these are the more markup tools that we get, of course. But if you swipe like this, you will find that there's actually more that you can use from the markup tool section. If you have added a wallpaper to your lock screen and you cannot find that wallpaper on your photos library with iOS 16.2, that can be done pretty easily. Go to customize your lock screen, tap on the three dots, and you will have the option to actually show that wallpaper on the photo library. Another feature that Apple has added to iPhones, not just iOS 16.2, but 16.1 and newer, of course, is the new option for the satellite call, and that is available right now on the USA so that of course was a server based update they released that without having to update the software but if you're, you live in USA you can now just head on to your settings app go under emergency and SOS and right here you will find a demo which will actually show you how to use emergency SOS calling via satellite. And now let's move on to the performance. Now here we have the Geekbench score for iOS 16.2 beta 3. So a quick comparison here to beta 2. So here we have the single core score 1866. 1886 was on iOS 16.2 beta 2, a slight decrease there. While we also have a slight increase on the multi-core score, we have 5546. With beta 3, with beta 2, we had 500, 5,528, so a slight increase there on the multi-core score, a slight decrease on the single core score, but that of course means nothing, those are just like very small numbers, and of course the performance with this latest update should be a bit better in the upcoming days of course we'll do a follow-up video and see how it goes from there so what's next of course a new beta next week now that apple is on the weekly schedule of releasing betas for ios 16.2 you can expect a new beta most likely on november 22nd right here and then of course another one on the 29th and i'm expecting apple to actually release the rc version of this software somewhere around the first week of December, maybe even on the second week, but you should expect Apple to actually release this by mid-December, this update to the public by mid-December. So before that, we will of course have another two or three betas and the RC version. And finally, let's talk about whether you should update or not to this software. Now, of course, having these amazing new features, a lot of people might want to try it. Now, currently we're on beta three, and of course it's quite good right now. It's very stable and you have the option to actually update to the public beta. So if you just want to try out the new features and you cannot wait for the public release for another few weeks, then you can go ahead and just update to the public beta. I think it's safe enough, but 
again if you just don't want to risk anything and you have only one device which is your daily device maybe it's a better idea to wait for a few more weeks so that's basically it for this video guys thank you guys for watching the videos don't forget to subscribe for more and leave a like on this one i'll see you on the next video